In this video, I'm going to cover the topic of taking a photo of a pole using a calibrated visual target up against the pole and using that photo and the CBT to determine attachment heights and span diameters. As you can see here, I already have a pole modeled with quite a few attachments already on it. Now in this video, I do want to focus on first bringing in photos, which a user can do by navigating to the edit dropdown under pull images and then selecting add images. Now what this does is opens an additional window like this one here, where a user can set the folder that those images are located in and then they will display on the screen here. Once a photo is selected, a user can hit OK and it will bring those photos over into OCalc Pro. For this example, I already have my photos loaded, so I'm just going to hit cancel. And those photos get populated over here in our measure window. Now you'll see for this example, I have two photos. A user can collect multiple images for a poll, but only one is going to be used for the calibration. I'm going to use this one since the other image is quite a bit darker and would be a little bit more difficult to see the different attachments. So I'm going to select this image here. Now what a user can also do is set up their screen to make this calibration process a little bit easier. I'm going to take my measure window and place it to the right hand side of all of my other tabs here and you'll see I get this sort of side-by-side -side display. Now with the side-by-side -side display, one thing worth noting is that in my 3D view on the left side, I can use my left click to rotate my pole. So the first thing that I would do is rotate my pole so that my orientation matches the orientation of the photo, just so it's a little bit easier to figure out where everything is placed. Now to pan around in the measure window on the photo, you'll see that your cursor has become this little box and our calibration option is the only one that's highlighted. Right now, trying to use left click to pan around the image is not going to work. It's only going to drop these red crosshairs so the right click has to be used to pan around the image. And then if you accidentally drop some of these crosshairs, you can just hit the calibrate button and those will go away. Now before we can do anything with this photo, we have to actually complete the calibration. You'll see all of our other options are grayed out. So what you're going to want to do is zoom in using your scroll wheel. And you'll zoom in until you can see your CVT. And what you'll see are those one, two, three, four red reflective targets of the CVT. Now you're going to zoom in until the height of this cursor box is about the same height as that red reflective target. In other words, this would be too much and this would be not quite enough. So you want to zoom in to just about this scale. And then you can do a left click to drop one of those red crosshairs. I'm going to use my right click to pan all the way up the stick and drop a red reflective target on each one of these. Three, and then we'll do our last one at the top of the pole, and that's four. So what you'll see next is that your cursor changes back into a crosshair and your calibrate button becomes grayed out and height becomes available. What this means is that now we can start adjusting the attachment heights of all of the items over here in our 3D view. So typically the first item that would be adjusted is the setting depth of the pole. One of the things you can do after calibrating the photo is just ensure that your setting depth that's being modeled is accurate to ensure that you get the most accurate um, capacity utilization number possible. This, even though according to the NESC and Geo95 there are different specifications for what the setting depth should be, doesn't necessarily mean that it's exact, so you can sort of check that using this tool. So in our measure tab, the first thing we can do is just go up and zoom in to the very top of our pole about that much. Now over in our 3D view, you can do the same. You can sort of zoom in a little bit, and then you're going to want to make sure that that pole is selected. So you're just going to click on it here. You'll see that it's yellow in the 3D view, and it's highlighted in dark blue in our inventory. That means that you have it selected. So with it selected and our height option selected, if we go over towards the top of our pole and do a left click, you'll see that we get this pop up here, which allows us to change our setting depth. I'm going to hit cancel for a second. I have my pole selected. I'm just going to go see what my current setting depth is. It's currently set to seven, seven feet. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to go and left click at the top of the pole, change my setting depth, 
and I'll see that my poll actually came up a little bit and our setting depth changed to 5.57 feet and our capacity changed accordingly from 77% to 81.2%. So you'll see that in cases where you're pretty close to the capacity um, being overloaded that that can make a difference. Now other items that you can adjust the attachment height of, um, they don't make as much of a difference on the capacity utilization, I guess depending on the item, but we can sort of work our way down the pole here and go about sort of changing the attachment height of all these other items so that it's more accurate. So I'm going to zoom in towards the top of the pole in my 3D view. Again, I'm using my left click and just dragging up to sort of pan up to the top of the pole. Let's zoom out a little bit more. Okay, so what I'm doing is selecting this top cross arm and I want to change its attachment height. Uh, in our 3D view here, there's quite a bit of space between the tip of the pole and that cross arm, whereas in our image, there's not a whole lot of space. So what do you use as the attachment point for this cross arm? Well, in the image, you can see that there is a through bolt here, sort of going through the pole. So that is where our attachment height is going to be. So with your cross arm selected, our current installation height of 42.41, I'm just going to click where that three through bolt is and change the height cross arm. And you'll see that it moves up accordingly. And our capacity utilization did not change very much. So we can sort of continue down the pole. Again, in your measure window, use your right click to pan down the pole. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I'll see that I have this other cross arm here, and that corresponds to this one. So I'm going to select this cross arm now and determine where best to put the attachment point. It's difficult to tell in this situation because there's sort of this bracket here holding it to the pole where it's probably attached up here and down here. So I'm just going to approximate the midpoint and use that as the height of this other cross arm and you'll see that it moves up accordingly. Now what we also have in this image, and it's a little hard to tell from this angle, are some guy wires sort of running behind it. Now you can also set the attachment height of those guy wires. So if I zoom in again, I know there is a guy wire attached sort of going up this side. Now it's difficult to see, but I would guess that it's attached to this bolt here that's going through, attached to the back side of it. So I'm going to select that guy wire and sort of line up my cursor with where that would be and set that to the height of where my guy wire is attached and you'll see that it moves down a little bit. Okay. Next, we are going to continue sort of moving down our pole here until we get to our communication section here. Now I'm going to move down in my 3D view so that way I can see everything. And I'll see that I have three communication bundles on each and that the spacing in my 3D view model isn't quite the same as in my measure window. So to set the attachment heights of these items, we're going to set the attachment height of the different through bolts I'm going to select this top one, assuming that this corresponds to this top one here. And with that three bolt selected, I'm going to kind of zoom in to about where that three bolt would be. I think I can see it right up here and set the height of that three bolt and it will move down in our 3D view. We're just going to do the same process to the other two I'm going to snap the height of that one and then snap the height of this one. And now those are placed in positions that are more accurate to reality. Now, if I'm moving down my pole, I don't see anything else here. It looks as though there may be two guy wires attached here. Oh, nope, they both go into one. So I actually have an extra guy wire on my 3D view. So I'm going to go ahead and I can delete that one, but I have a feeling it will overload my pole here. So that is something, in this case, something that you can check in the field. But for the purposes of using our CVT tool, we can just go ahead and leave everything alone. And that's how you would go about adjusting different attachment heights. For items like transformers or streetlights, you would, again, approximate the midpoint between the top and the bottom of a transformer or where the streetlight is attached. 
and in the coming OCALC 5.03, you'll be able to tell OCALC where that attachment height measurement is coming from, if it's the top of the transformer or the bottom, and if it's at the midpoint. An additional feature of our CVT tool, or our digital measurement technology really, are these other buttons here. This one in particular, conductor diameter, can be used to determine an accurate span diameter for the spans that are being modeled. Typically, the spans that are used in the model are an approximation. It's not guaranteed that the ones that you're modeling match what exists in reality, but this conductor diameter tool will give you a better idea. I'm going to pan all the way back up to the top of my pole, and I'm going to get a measurement of the diameter of one of these primaries. Now you're going to just pick any one that you can see clearly. I wouldn't go over here since there are labels and other items sort of polluting our view. So I'm going to zoom in to about this close. And this corresponds to this particular span over here in my 3D view. Now I'm going to select that span and choose my conductor diameter tool. And what this tool does is when you left click and drag, it creates this expanding yellow box. That's how it does the diameter measurement. So I'm going to line up my cursor in the middle of that span. I want the point of my arrow right in the middle, so when I left click and drag, that box expands equally in both directions. So I'm going to drag that box until it's about the same width as that span and release my mouse click, and you'll see that you have quite a few options. One is display measured value, which tells me that my diameter here is 0 0.62 inches. It's also asking if you want to add a label, I'm going to hit no. If I want to go and take that measurement again, I have some other options here, um, the most valuable of which is probably substitute from catalog. Now what this does is opens an additional window here where it displays the first the value that you measured. In this case, I measured a diameter of 0 0.55 inches, 5.56 if you want to round up. Then what you have is the ability to set a tolerance or sort of a range of the values that you want to look at. In this case, my diameter tolerance is set to 5%, which means that I'm only looking for spans that are within 5% of the number that I measured. So I'm looking for spans between this range here, between 0.52 and 0.58 inches in diameter. Underneath, it is showing my master catalog filtered to only show those spans. So these four are the only ones that fit this criteria. So I can safely assume that my primaries in my model are one of these type. So I'm going to hover my mouse over the symbol, and about halfway down I can see what the span diameter is. In this case, it's 0.56, in this case, it's 0.56, 0.57, and 0.56. Now, you can choose whichever one of these you like. I'm going to choose this ACSR 4 out span, and I'm going to select OK. You can also select Apply to Other Spans, and it will go and replace all of those other spans with this particular type or you can do just a select that spin and hit OK. And then go over and view your inventory list and you'll see that it replaced that span. Then what you can also do as an alternative is just sort of go in and replace all of the spans that you need to. Now, if I look at the span I originally started with, its diameter was 0.52. So not, not very far off, a little bit smaller than what it is in reality. So it is going to make a slight difference on what our capacity utilization is going to be. But once I replace all of these, I can see that I'm at 84.7%. And that would conclude this video as part one of how you can go about using a CV the CVT tool and the DMT technology. I will continue this example in a part two video.